Six till five. We should go. Six till five. All right, so I'd call the Cal Select Board meeting to order. Do you want to call your guys to order? I'll call the uh, Cal School Board meeting to order. Six And public comment on items not on the agenda. Additions or changes. Um, and just so you know, the Select Board is usually a little more interactive with people that come to the meetings. You know, we don't make them wait till the beginning or the end to speak. But I would ask if people have something to say that we only have an hour, so make it brief and to the point. It'd be really helpful. Um, okay, you said Pat has info on the trash thing, so should we flip the order of talking about stuff? I think that makes sense. Okay, so good. let's talk about Act 46 first, then. Um, I just don't want to lose sight of having time to talk about that issue as well. So thank you for coming. Should we go around the room and introduce ourselves to people who don't know? That makes sense. Okay. Denise Wheeler, Select Board. I'm Katie Lincarnish, the Reporting Secretary. Cliff Emmons, Cal Select Board. Rose Kalchuk, Select Board. I'm Chris Cataret on the School Board. Rick. <laughs> Rick Purchase. Gail Graham. Scott Message. Janet Anselm. David from the Scott Thompson from the U32 board. Rick Keen, Callis board, school board. Susanna Culver, Callis board. <coughs> John Braven, Callis select board, and Judy. Judy Robert and this is Jerome from Orca. We call Right. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I, I wasn't sure I was going to say it right. So I stuck with the first name. So what's going on with Act 46? What can we do to help? Well, the latest, I mean, just to kick it off, I mean, it seems like as of in August, we will be really facing a decision about whether it's, it's likely that our, you know, our proposal would be accepted, the alternative proposal, well, put in by all five towns. Well, maybe you could back up a little bit. This Callis School Board or the certain union submitted an alternative governance plan? That's right. It's an alternative governance, the governor of government, the governance option other than the, what was pushed by the AOE and by the legislature, the preferred model, which does not work for us. Hold on a second. I think Gail and Janet are struggling to hear. If you guys want to pull your chairs up, <coughs> yeah. so you can be, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. and anyone else, yeah. not just yeah. playing yeah. favorites with the women. We can turn the fan off if people I'm having trouble hearing that. It's a speed Advanced days. Jerome, if you open that door, would that help, you think? Okay. The bugs are going to come in. Well, I'll get you in first. <laughs> oh, great. So anyways, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rick. So essentially what happened was this. You know, we were tasked. it has been a very lopsided process, you know, to actually push through a single universal model, and which kind of works for Chittenden Tech County type suburban towns. And certain towns with a lot of wealth and, and larger economies, but smaller towns can be really victimized by this. <coughs> and what's happened is at this point, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Agency of Education and, and the State School Board, they can, they can essentially <coughs> impose this. We actually went out and did we did a, a study for a few years, two and a half years probably, on whether that preferred model, which is what was being you know, pushed down on us, would work. And all five towns unanimously basically inject, rejected that, the boards. We never even put it out for a vote. But the boards, there was much discussion. We turned that thing inside out, and it just didn't work. Yeah. We created a proposal. Um, if I may, just, just for clarity's sake. Do it. <clears throat> um, that merger study committee that mm -hmm. went on, you know, basically as long as you want to talk. Right. Um, the, the, this committee did not recommend merger. Um, it wasn't it was unanimously it? not recommending merger. It was, I remember well, we had true. the, that's, that's, um, that's true. I, the, what was unanimous was every board approved the alternative. The alternative, you're right, I apologize. And that's, what, and that's what you submitted to the fact. AOE? Right, yes. and, they, and they have reached, at this point, they have rejected that. Their recommendation is that we, they, we, you know, after 
a lot of work by all of the towns and the unanimous recommendation of the five towns plus the, the consolidated high school that they rejected that out of hand and said no we're going you know basically we recommend the preferred model so now this goes but what, what was their reason for that well go ahead Scott do you want to um, well, this is just a recommendation. This is not the decision. <coughs> it's not. But this this is yeah, right. this you is, can see the writing on the wall. This yeah, is a, um, I, I think so. Um, yeah, uh, essentially, the the agency of education rejected our arguments. They um, and leaned on uh, sort of the what I'm tempted to call, and I guess what I now will call. The, the dogma of consolidation that, you know, um, a consolidated system is the best means for achieving the goals of Act 46, you know, the equity, quality, efficiency, transparency, and value. <clears throat> uh, what, our, what our alternative proposal had argued was that because, especially because, of the problem of our legacy debt um, in among the five towns, that this the transition from our present system to a merged system, which is uh, essentially um, you know all town lines are abolished and we become one great big sort of super town. Um, what would happen in this case? Is that um, that there would be a a shifting of costs from um, higher wealth to lower wealth towns? The higher wealth, especially East Montpelier, um, but you know I am not putting anything on East Montpelier because they actually agreed that this was unfair that Callis and Worcester should pay for their uh, their bond. When you say a shifting of costs, it's actually you said. From the higher wealth to the lower, it's actually from the the shifting wealth goes from the lower, sorry, the lower, thank you, the lower wealth exactly. to the higher shifting wealth. Shifting of the wealth. burden is from higher right. to lower yeah. wealth. Lower. Shifting of, <coughs> of wealth is, or shifting of resources is from the lower wealth to the higher wealth town. Sense. So what? Um, so three towns have a total debt of about fifteen million. Correct. Yeah. That that would then Elementary be spread school. out and shared within. All of the towns, regardless of whether or not we have debt or not, I don't even understand so we how would they take on that. their debt. Right. How yeah. is that? I don't even understand how they can do that. How that is? We have to vote to agree to it. I don't think the state's going to be able to force that on us. Well, it, it's um. This huge uh, there's so many questions. There. Yeah. There's so many questions associated with this, but the problem is that our, our argument was that this landed us in a kind of paradox. We could have equity. Um, but then we wouldn't have efficiency because in order to achieve an equitable solution to the debt problem for a merged district and oh god I'm, I'm the world's worst explainer so forgive me um, in order to achieve an equitable solution East Montpelier's debt would have to be in the same proportion to the overall debt as East Montpelier's student population is to the overall student population, since that's how costs are distributed. Sounds complicated. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. And it's You're doing a fine job. You're doing a fine job. You are. Okay, to begin with. So because East Montpelier's debt is twice as big as its share of student population, basically what we would have to do in order to uh, devise an equitable solution is there are a number of possible um, I, I've been able to come up with three possible solutions, um, one of which is the one that Janet got through uh, in 2017, um, uh, transferring the bond from school to town. But there are two other ways in which, which involve <clears throat> essentially either bond and buy, that is, the new uh, merged district would bond uh, about $9 million and then buy each school in order to provide the restitution to basically fix the, um, the damage done 
by this cost shifting. Or alternatively, um, it would be a sell and lease back arrangement whereby um, schools, school property would transfer in all the towns, it would have to happen in all the towns except for Ishmael Pelier. Ishmael Pelier could do it too, but um, at least the other four. And in that way, what you could do if, if the property th were transferred from the school district to the town and then were leased back to the new merged school district, uh, you could essentially build it in so that uh, Callis and Worcester and now Berlin and Middlesex as well would be reimbursed the amount that it would take uh, to compensate for the extra subsidies that they would otherwise have been paying. So that um, essentially in that scenario, um, all of our property taxes would rise to the level of Ismat Peliers. Ismat, that would be, however, the, uh, the towns would be able to potentially lower their taxes so that school plus town taxes would remain constant. School taxes would go up, but for Callis and Worcester, and to some degree also for Middlesex and Berlin, uh, town taxes would go down. And overall, the- Town would, or school? Um, school taxes would all go up to the same level, the level of Ismael Kiri. So you're looking at saying, bring out the town, the school taxes, and lower the town taxes, combine them, and have the same. But the school and the state don't get to set the town tax rate. No. We do. Right, but but here's the thing. Um, I, for example, I, in, in this scenario, Callis School would be leased back to um, to the new merged district for roughly three hundred thousand dollars per year at base, um, just to cover that that subsidy amount, and then whatever else is negotiated for, you know, typical lease type costs. East Montpelier would be leased back for zero. Hmm. So that three hundred thousand dollars. They don't own the school. Simply doesn't own the school. No, I'm saying how, I don't know how they can we can how they can lease back something they don't own. They do own it. The town owns the school. Well, East Montpelier Town then, whatever they. No, they, for Callis School. Right. How can they lease back something? We have to vote this all through. This yeah. isn't just. The, I'm not saying this is a good solution. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to explain. I'm just trying to understand how yeah. to even read to this. It's really, well, it's really convoluted. This is the puzzle. This is right. to solve only the debt, yeah. right? If we are forced to consolidate. Right. And then there's the, but there's also the things like the school closure issue, and you know, you don't, the way these the super board is arranged. I mean, the, the town essentially that's based upon. The population, the student population, we would have much lower representation than, say, uh, probably two towns would control all the decision making right, that's on that the board. And, we, and the townspeople of Callis have, if they decide to close Callis, which they will, I mean, I've, ultimately that will, because it will, they'll fill their capacity, these Montpelier, it would be their financial advantage to do that. That, you know, we really would have no recourse. I mean, I don't care if people talk about the Articles of Agreement, but we ask. The lawyer in the 706B discussion, I asked this specific question, and he said you couldn't write those in a way that you could tie the hands of future. Or of what future financial boards. advantage would it be for us to to Mont East Montpelier to close Callis and send the kids over? It wouldn't there? be to our it wouldn't be to our advantage. I mean, we're going to be paying higher taxes under this scenario. Well, if, know, okay, so if the tax if the taxes can be fixed and. It. I'm just wondering how East Montpelier benefits what, monetarily. I just you made a statement. They, I'd like to. We're hear covering that. that debt, but then we're also there's another side. But if we this, figure out how to cover the there's debt, there's another that's side of that. And what happens is that you also, you know, you were trying to keep you know a healthy community here. You take a school away, the families, young, the, those people with kids are going to get as close to the schools as they can to go. That's going to push them into the East Montpelier, push those property values up, ours get pushed down. We have we have a harder time bringing kids, pure family, families with kids into our communities. It's a big hardship. I mean, we've raised kids. You know what it is to be able, if you're far from a school, 
and you're but you have two working parents that's a big issue to be able to get to them and and arrange logistics you know, and so I'm there not, are a lot I'm not of long of of <clears throat> no school. I'm just saying we would still have a school we would just rename East Montpelier like Cal Pelier and <laughs> and it would then become the school for the community you might right. have a longer but distance to drive, I, but it right. still would be the community school. I, it's not, we, it's but under that not scenario, it closing the Cal <laughs> Elementary under that it's scenario, not, Scott's leaseback program is, is not something that's available, as I understand it, because the school would be out of the system. There's nothing to lease back. It wouldn't the happen at the same mm -hmm. time. So, I mean, that's well, years mm -hmm. down the road. If, yeah, if the problem is, is we would have, we'd have, we'd lose Again, the, it wouldn't happen at the, same the time. towns with the the greater number of voters, I guess, or would have the greater greater sway. And right. they, another town essentially could close our school. Right, right. And I, I think there's a huge constitutional issue here. I brought this up. I, I mean, years ago, Janet came to our select board when Gay Somington had something similar. And I said, it's a constitutional issue. The state cannot force <coughs> our schools to close. And other towns cannot vote to, to, to close our, or to, to augment, cannot vote to do anything with a property that we own and hold. We own that property in fee simple title. And for the state to think that they're going to come in and they're going to take control or the vote of Middlesex and Berlin or some other, some other towns are going to vote the future of a school that we own. I don't see how they can legally you know, do that. I really don't. I think we go to a charter school if that if that happens. I think that's another. Well, I think what we have to do is they they clear they clearly think they can. Oh, no, I think we all have to get get oh. and get ready for a big legal battle. I mean, I think we're going to have to take this to court. And you know, we met this weekend with a group of other towns who are in the same boat as we are, and they're talking about options, and they're fairly limited out there mm -hmm. what to do. But I mean, one discussion that I had that I'm actually quite interested in. They actually, this was North Bennington, and they successfully discontinued their school and started it, restarted as an independent. And it operates within the SU actually. You know, they still access special ed funding and resources and then they pay for certain sources out of the SU, but they're an independent. You know, they retain control. So we may want to consider this. I hate to do that. I'm a big proponent of public education. Yeah. But this is going, this is really going south on us the way, and the way it has been managed is more something you would expect from a fascist government rather than a, you know, certainly a democracy, and it's like so far from, you know, Vermont governance models. I mean, I'm astounded that the, that the, that the legislature would ever even consider this. And, you know, I, you know, I, you know how vocal you know, this state has <coughs> policy on, on energy. We're trying to go local with our food, go local with our energy generation, mm -hmm. you know, reduce our driver miles by carpooling and everything else that, mm -hmm. that we can come up. And then when it comes to schools, we're gonna bust them. I and mean, what's going on for Rochester, busting them over the mountain, over Brandon mm -hmm. Mountain, to, the other, to another watershed. I mean, it is, I, in the winter, on that crazy road over Brandon, I mean, yeah. they are out of their minds. And they partition and they disconnect it from you know, an, an overarching concept in terms of what's best for our people. There, this is just. I think, you know, what is really egregious about it is that people have been saying this, and many people, you know, hundreds of them, opposing this and giving these facts. And Janet, you'll you've heard it. You know, I've been in a lot of those hearings. I've done it even myself, and and it's come fallen on deaf ears. I mean, it has been deaf ears. I don't understand what's driving that, but I tell you one thing: it is not okay with me. I. You know, we'll, I suggest what we do as a town. I mean, we can either roll over and just let this happen, or we get out and we fight them right to the end, and we mm -hmm. take them to court. And you know, I think we probably, you know, there were several lawyers in this meeting who've actually been donating their time, even, you know, but that, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, they're even we're looking people for people have been led to believe that. This is going to fix the runaway cost yeah, of schools. I think there are a lot of people out there. The studies have also been saying, and it's not. I don't tell me. I know exactly what they're saying. That's why they're gung ho about it. We've been educating. That's what they think. Right. Yeah, but there are a lot of people, you know, giving the other the, the contrary information. It's just been ignored, and it has been mm -hmm. squashed. You know, that's what is bad here. It's one thing to go in with incomplete information. And when you've got AOE and groups like that that are heavy lobby presence, I mean, my God, you don't see Rebecca Holcomb out in the communities. Have you ever seen her anywhere? She resigned. 
Yeah, I know, but you know when I'm talking, Dot through most of this process, you see her every day in those halls and people, and that's, unfortunately, you know, that's mm -hmm. the way this so goes. So, do Callis select board members have any other questions? I mean, yeah. I've attended some of the meetings and some of the other board members have too. Yeah, um, so I did attend the last meeting that was held at U32, and it was um, informative and... I, you know, I just want to say I applaud the work of our local school board and Scott, um, and I agree that this is totally not okay. Um, so what's the plan for August 15th? Because that's the date that they're going to review our appeal or... Um, and, and who you is the day? I need to know. Well, that's the deadline for all the submissions, the resubmissions, right? Well, that's and what then with that, we have, have a hearing. So we have, we have a hearing. So we, we have to have a resubmission for August 15th? Well, there, there's um, one, a one-pager. The State Board has asked for one page uh, answer to, I think, four questions. Um, we might have to go over a page, or at least do a page and then have backup. Or we'll get an F, right? <laughs> we'll get an F. I think we're going to get an F regardless. Um, but we it's the sort of setup. You do have. Yeah, that. we do. That's, that's the that's state that's board, and that's not the agency of education. Well, they're um, they're all the same. <laughs> they're they're very tight. They're not the same, but they're um, my own assessment, my own read from the meetings that I've attended, is that the state board will be inclined to do what it's told. Mm -hmm. um, now, is this the is this the group that was formed? You you weren't there, and you got picked to help. Oh, I, is yeah. That, is that is this the one? That's the one. The three musketeers. Yeah. There, um, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Janet and Flora. I'm sorry. sorry. I just that's okay. I just wanted to add something about the um, the F forty nine that passed last year, which was intended to make it easier and a little more clear how you did an alternative governance structure, which is what mm -hmm. we're in right now. And one of the things I managed to get added to that was language that said that one of the considerations would be a wide disparity in debt. Um, AOE opposed it um, mm -hmm. pretty aggressively, but it did pass, the governor signed it. And um, as far as I can tell, the agency ignored it yes, completely yes. Um, in their report, because I read the, right. the, almost yeah. all of it, read all the callus, at the Washington Central part of it. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know whether it's going to do any good, but I am going to write a letter to the state board pointing that out. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just that they ignored the alternative governance structure debt language, but they also ignored the language in the underlying statute that you're talking about. Yes. Which I can't remember. It's, I thought the language was a little more broad. But mm -hmm. to go back to that early discussion, I think that there has been, for the last year, room for communities to come to some different arrangement on debt. Um, and but you know, it, they're not. None of them are ideal, and none of them are simple. Mm -hmm. um, but Jim, they're but they're there. Um, I have a question for you. Though. Who's running the show in there? You, the legislature. Really, I mean, they the AOE should not be dictating to the legislature what the hell's going on here. Well, I'm I, sorry, this is they, they did, ignored I, what you, we did. They didn't say that. They ignored it. Well, I'm so, I'm sorry, but you know, yeah. I, this is a democracy here, and I, you know, maybe I'm out of line, but I've watched this now for years. You know, I've been in this since before this was a fight, Scott and I, and you know, I have been astounded how little backbone I've seen. And certainly blindness from Dave Sharp, and these are people I've worked with in the past, and in the and bailed out of troubles, you know, when they were in Addison County and things like that. And I look, you know, in the complete deafness. And I'd like to know what was driving that decision making because it's clearly not going to save money. It is clearly not going to really help the kids in any way. I mean, wherever it's been done, it's been a disaster. I know I've talked to the states that did it, and I tell you, I can line those people up for you. I offered to, but nobody even wanted to listen. You know, but that's the, this is the reality. Why did you let this happen? I mean, they should not be dictating these rules and these conditions. I mean, this is way out of control. This, you guys have let us down in a big way. And I say those are harsh words, but I'm, I'm understating them, believe me, in my opinion. Well, let's hope the legislators, <clears throat> if they think there's a, been a 
unreasonable interpretation of the law or uh, they have, they've limited the flexibility that was provided. Let's hope the legislature, the con those who control it, stand up to this. Well, I'm just not confident because there's a divide in, the, in those that control the legislature. Right. There are a whole bunch of Dems who run, run that legislature yeah. who think this is really cool. Well, and this is great. Democrats and, and you know, this is just <laughs> like I see in yeah. environmental stuff. There's the mm -hmm. urban environmentalists who have their perspective on what protecting the environment is. That means taking the beer can, putting it in a recycling bin instead of the trash can. That's environmentalism to an urban person. And they're, these people are fine with big, huge school districts. They graduated in classes of 2,000 students. You know, yeah. they, they worked for them. They went to Columbia or Yale. And so, you know, I, I, we're going to lose the soul of Vermont. This is just this dismantling of our rural culture. And uh, Well, you know, we're getting, I mean, we hear all this screaming about development <coughs> in this state. And These schools are one of the last vestiges that's, of yeah, our little town. You know, there's a threat it. at the federal level of closing <clears throat> our rural post offices. Yeah. Then we're, there's a threat now at the state level to close our rural schools. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to have left. You know, town meeting will be the last thing to go. Well, it's getting harder and harder um, to track. Well, we're having to pay people to come live here. Well, that and, and the no, debt. we're not. That's a crazy idea. That's, that's not. Okay, that's okay. That's crazy. No one can argue that costs. Yeah. No one can argue that costs are becoming very, very difficult. But you know what? They're paying Taxes people to come are, live here, and that's just craziness. Well, they're okay, not paying. Crazy. First of all, that's not a proposal. No one's paying anyone. To but taxes are. Too high. Their taxes, taxes, but oh, taxes well. are too high, right. and we have to we have to figure it out. You know, I'm not saying that all this is correct. I'm just saying that we have to figure out a better way to do what we're doing. We can keep plugging ahead Wait. and ignore everything and just say, the, "I want the, to keep you know, the school that I went to school at because I went there and I have fond that's memories." You, you look at this is about. That's, that's not, not the what core this of is about. I, I, the taxes I here. Yeah, I grew up on Long Island. My I'm mother, sorry. my retired mom. 94 years old, pays $16,000 in property taxes for a house that my dad built for $25,000, including the property, in 1955. The house is valued at like $400,000. It's not worth a million dollars. She's paying $16,000 in property taxes. Most of that is school taxes. So, and, and I have friends in Connecticut and friends in California. Maryland. And, but the, the issue is, the taxes are high relative to our income. And there's a big, larger issue here. The wage here is terrible. And the, the taxes are high relative to our income. Down there, they make gobs of money. They don't care about a $16,000 tax bill. But to say just unequivocally our taxes are high, our taxes are very low. It's just that our wages and our incomes are also much right. okay, lower. If you look at the whole picture. You got to look right. at the whole picture. But I, I, that that drug me the taxes high, they're not. You, relative level. to income, they're high. So, um, they're low if you are. I wanted to give other folks an opportunity to Pardon speak. Me? Chris, mm -hmm. did you have any? I mean, you're new to the school board, so. I, I have nothing to say at this time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to take it in. This is yeah. only my second meeting ever. So. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. well, for you. Welcome <laughs> 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 yeah, really. to Callan. And my first one was the, the, the entire SU oh, board, so yeah. it, it was it just <laughs> equally as <laughs> equally overloading. As, uh, overloading. Yeah. Gail, did you have anything quick to say? Yeah, well, I um, have one question for clarification, I, along with everything else. But um, one of the latest things I've heard that if our school does close, the building is no longer ours. Is that true? I mean, it, there's. Go ahead, Scott. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, if the merged district, as I understand it, if the merged district decides no longer to use a building, they turn it over to the town for basically a dollar. Well, they don't own it. They don't, well, we own our building. Okay. Yeah, but the problem is they think stop they own it. They can think what they want, but they should have <laughs> deeds, and the deed is very clear. We bought it. We own it. It's actually in the town of Callis's name. It's not in some school entity's name. It's in the town of Callis's name. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if they want to buy it from us first so they can own it and then give it back to us for a dollar, for a dollar we can have that conversation. They do not own it. Yeah. Right. Um, Thank you. The chain of title is clear. Let's but if they were that. to give it back to us, it could be used as a community center, as a rec okay. center. As a, there you. would be multiple uses. That's
Rick, is there a room or are you a room? Uh, I basically just came to learn. I've heard bits and pieces of this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm very concerned about taxes. I think they're high. If you're retired from a Vermont business yeah. and you never made a great fortune, and when right. you sold your business, you didn't make a fortune again, then you're worried about high taxes. And, and they just drift up every year. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem to matter. Everybody at town meeting, no, oh, yeah, we want all that. In the school, particularly, well, so I'm I'm on the verge of you know being at being needing to move somewhere else to lower my overhead, basically. To that, I would say this though: you know, having been on a board, you're the vice chair of the board for six years in the past, and then <coughs> and involved with that school heavily ever since. I mean, there's local boards with elected elect, elected officials who go in front of town meetings. They are pretty. They control that cost as much as they can, and they keep that reasonable. You know, I will guarantee you, and this is what I heard from like the main people I talked to: the second they consolidate, you've lost that, yeah. you've lost that check. No. You have no voice, and the costs spiral upward because there's nothing. And they said they, they also said universally accountability went to nothing, well, you, and, and they you wouldn't don't even have much to say about what goes on at U32 because you don't. Right. You it's think. a bigger group, right? And just well, imagine that. The same <coughs> you yeah. know, by you'd think. I mean that by efficiencies of scale that should be cheaper. Why is it that that's by far the highest cost per pupil? And there's a lot of waste in there. There's you can't oversee. You know, there isn't the kind of oversight at that level that you've got. Down at the local boards. Assuming you elect good boards, if you don't, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out. It's cause and effect. The communities have the responsibility. It's like a select board. You know, you if you put people in that aren't going to manage well, you're going we it, to. It's going to cost you. So. Want to give Scott and Sharon an opportunity, and then we need to talk about trash. <laughs> We're not talking trash right now. Yeah, well, yeah. I was going to say something along those lines. <laughs> Scott, do you have something you want to say? So they impose this structure. But there's there's agreements that go along with it. Could you talk to me about that, Scott? Um, there would have to be articles of agreement, yeah. uh, and there are sort of standard default articles of agreement that we would not want. Yeah. It would not be in our interest. So what we're trying to do, I mean, Rick is sort of outlining um, one or more alternative options that we could we would try to keep open. One of those alternative options is to draw up um, variant articles of agreement in order to cover the, um, the, the debt problem in particular because that uh, I mean that is clear and present danger I think um, and you can quantify it and it's um, it's clear that uh, if if we don't solve that problem, we will go into this you know new merged system with bitterness and and all kinds of bad vibes and psychology between the towns um, that will not lend itself to uh, to good management or or you know um, I call he's a district. I thought you said the Articles of Agreement, though, couldn't bind future boards. Well, that's quite a lot of there, there's, uh, there's one school of thought that says if the towns vote on the articles, the actual text of, the, of certain articles, mm -hmm. and those articles might have to do, say, with closing schools or with distribution of of legacy debt, if those texts are voted on um, by the townspeople, mm -hmm. then they can only be changed by the townspeople in, okay. a, in a vote. That's a school of thought. However, there are other, uh, I've heard other opinions expressed that, no, that wouldn't matter either. So well, once you've relinquished that power, <coughs> that vote, you, the town is no longer, that's what the lawyer who went the 76G. I would stated. go with the first term interpretation, yeah. but I don't. Yeah. I think it would be That's at what least. I've yeah. well, I, I, I specifically don't. asked the question at the 706B here. They had to have a lawyer hired you know, to come in and ask that, and I asked that exact question, and he said no. 
Oh, you said the base. I care who was it? Um, Giuliani. Uh, Giuliani. Giuliani. And he came in and he just, he, you know, very. This he said no. Any board in the future could, at their whim, could change those. And that means that if you've got, you know, two towns that are controlling all the votes, that there you mm -hmm. go. You any articles you put in place can be modified to their advantage. But, but there would be sort of a moral uh, bond but, that you would hope would. Where's you know, been the morality in this process? I, mean, I don't trust that. Yeah. 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 Right, so I want to give Sharon to <coughs> speak. Uh, yeah, thank you. So I think I want to echo Rose's comments and just thank And this is Sharon with the Cal Select. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. I was seven <laughs> minutes late, and you guys were all finished eating and like deep into the talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, Some of us didn't eat yet. Just <laughs> oh, is that it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I did. Um, so I'm hearing, I'm hearing um, that the debt is a big issue, but one of the things that I worry about in this kind of a negotiation, if you will, mm -hmm. is, is that, oh, you know, we've made a big issue with the debt, rightfully so, and that gets addressed. Oh, the debt's taken care of, you're not gonna own East Montclair's debt or anybody else's debt. So I think what I haven't heard with any clarity is how do we feel about the issue if the debt issue is moved aside mm -hmm. and what position are we taking now so that we're clear, perhaps, that the debt is not the only issue. No, because not. that is a solvable issue. And some of the other issues that we're talking about, the, the fundamental nature of the school in our community, which I agree with. I lived in this town for five years before I knew anybody and I started meeting you all when the kids started going to school. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a huge um, community. It's a huge it's a binder. community. Yeah. And it's not just, it's, you know, the debt can be solved, but but we still have other concerns. So I want to say that out loud. Yeah, yeah I don't think you can, I don't think you can solve the sense of community in any written document or anything. You just, the sense and the feeling and the stuff like that that's important right. is just gone and you can never, you can't, you can't get that back. Mm -hmm. Janet, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, don't believe the debt can be solved. We've been working on it for two years. We, we don't have an answer, really. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we've, I we've been, been, I think it can. I think the Articles of Agreement can do something other than simply pulling the debt. Um, just not to say that it's easy to do or that it will be totally satisfactory. I mean, the things that you have to um, uh, take into account, you know, there may, there may be some consequences that, that in terms of leasing and uh, selling and transferring property. Mm -hmm. and so, so this on. is something we but haven't tried yet because everything there was we've tried language has added said, yeah. last year um, to the, um, I don't know, the traditional model, whatever it is, I'm trying not to call it the preferred, preferred. model, mm -hmm. the, the non-alternative model um, that allowed something other than pooling debt. Um, and so that's been on the books since last year. and. Um, and I think there, there would be, if it, if it said specifically bonding, I think there would be room to do something like that. The agency opposed that language, too. Um, mm -hmm. They opposed that language for the um, tr you know, traditional merger, and they opposed the language, uh, which, so I got that language in, and I also got the language in on the alternative uh, model, and they opposed that. So, so the report, reads as though neither of those things exist, but they do. So but at what point, sorry, at what point do we say it's, it's solvable? And, and, and we know for certain, 100%, that it is something that I, can be solved. I will write up, I'll show you the yeah. solution. It's a mess. You will hate it, <laughs> but, um, but, it's, yeah. but it's a solution. But so, it, but, and it's something they're accepting. So I want to know they well, haven't we accepted are, are, anything yeah. like that. But this Washington Central is a little bit unusual in terms of, of the course. disparity. Um, <laughs> because I looked at all the other towns, other SUs, to see how much disparity there was in SUs. Mm -hmm. And there, it, there are SUs, including merged ones, where there's a significant disparity, but not as much as there is in Washington Central. So, these so nobody, nobody's done it yet. Um, but I think that there is room to do it 100%. Uh, you know, it's hard to know, but if, but if the, uh, you know, if one avenue is to have a group of people figure out a solution that would be acceptable if that's where we end up, just so that we're not sort of 
saying no, 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 and then realizing that we've got to figure something out. But every um, time we put a solution out there to any problem, it's ignored. Or else they, they end run it with a new rule. I mean, that's been consistent through this whole process. I mean, it has been, it, it, it's, there's a, their, their eyes are on one point and one path. I think I'm, if voters in the five communities voted for an alternative debt structure, they would agree with it. Um, I, I don't, I can't think why they, they, no they, they is who? They agency being the state, state board. board. Uh, ultimately, okay. it's the state board. As opposed to the agency of yeah. education, which disagrees right now. Yeah, Ult okay. ultimately, it's the state board. But I agree okay. with Scott. They're, they're, they're basically staffed out of the agency. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah. they're right. definitely. Um, they're in bed. Yeah. There's a division, but it's not as. So all of this is going to happen before the legislature goes back in yes. session. Yes. So yeah. what are you prepared to do this legislative session if we don't get I, it's just I mean what I mean you and other people yeah. there are obviously not in favor of this yeah, so I, I, I mean I can't I can't I, without knowing what's happening in August and what's going to happen in November it yeah. would be November. certainly and easier November, right. to come up with a solution if, if the communities had actually voted um, that yeah. would you know the fact that there wasn't a vote I think was one um, yeah, yes. one uh, yeah. weakness in our in our proposal, and I understand why there wasn't. Yeah, um, but I do think it's. But there was a very person. deliberate. I, at every one of the seven or six B meetings, I have said, yeah. we've got to be out in the public, you know, educating them. Yeah. We've got to bring them. Yeah. And there was a deliberate effort not so, to do that. Wait, so we're going to have to. Move I want to understand what Janet's point is. Uh, yeah, about the history. But your point is, if there were, if the town's folks. We had a special yeah. school board, school whatever. meeting, yeah. whatever you call it, town meeting, yeah. and we had a vote on a proposal, and the townspeople in each town voted to support yeah. that proposal, the yeah. alternative yeah. proposal yeah. with the, yeah. the agreements and everything else Scott kind of talked about. Um, then you think the likelihood is greater I that think, the, I think it's the strength, it strengthens it. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's an extremely important point, and okay. it mm -hmm. raises a question whether we should try to get something for the November uh, yeah. I think you election. should. Yeah, I think you should. Well, we have to have this thing nailed down. Like that, if you, yeah. I think you ran three the scenarios well, of financing. You have to. The powers that be, you all, the collective needs to arrive at what they think the best scenario is and the most likely scenario to get passed. By the way. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't bias. I mean, for or against any town, I think that's the one that's going to get passed. And then we, that's got to be run by the voters, like in November, as you say. And so, we can do that before the legislature. Comes so you back. have to get the other towns to agree to that because we know what's going to happen August 15, they're going to still say no. So I think we have to go with knowing that that's probably what's going to happen and be planning for the next step because that's really going to be the most important thing I is to get the vote out. I would say this if we're going to put that vote out there, mm -hmm. simultaneously, we are also putting out our clear message that we're going to court if you know any legal means we can and number two you know we look at discontinuing the school and we can begin the exploration well, starting I mean, let me hear me out i know what i mean is you know uh, an independent school mm -hmm. because that they can't really deal with that and that shows that you're actually serious i mean i, I the only reason i'm skeptical about this skeptical we gotta, we gotta is that on. we've done this in good faith yeah all the towns in Vermont. <laughs> And by God, they've been railroaded. I, I don't college. see. I don't see that process happening so quick that we have to do all that right now. I think it takes about three months. I talked to the towns. Well, you know, the attorney general is going to have to get behind this, and you know, TJ is not a dummy. And I, I, I think when he gets down to what the reading of the law is and who owns what, I think he's going to be thinking very long and hard about okay. these cases. I want to. We're not going to have time to talk about trash, which we need to. Gail, 30 Just seconds. one comment. I'd like seconds. to make mention uh, for those of us that were attended the supervisory meeting a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and when Michael Duane, who mm -hmm. happens to be from East Montpelier, mm -hmm. and an XAG. got up and I staff on top of staff. He of staff. was very, okay, you know, mm -hmm. very, we already, there's already too much staff at the supervisory union. That's where they need to start looking at where the dollars are. That's what Michael said. He was, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so can we talk about trash? Don't you want to stay and talk about trash, General? <laughs> so, let, so just a quick, just a brief history. Um, the town, <laughs> the town, received a notice of uh, violation 
for the dump on several different issues. Um, our depot, it's not a Yes, the, the depot. transfer depot. station. Transfer. Transfer station. Um, and we had Bruce Westcott from Solid Waste Management District come in and we got dung on the composting stuff, which we told them never mind about this grow comp what is it called? Grow compost? Mm -hmm. Where the, the, the depot is serviced by grow a private entity. Right. Grow and they compost. weren't necessarily coming and picking stuff up as they were contracted to do so. John Brabant is now doing picking well, up. I the will. I'm, I'm waiting for the phone call. <laughs> From who? I was told Grow was their last time. Oh, that's right. Isn't it July? July is their and last time. That was time, July right? 8th yeah. or something. We'll have to check on the yeah. time of that. But John Brabant offered to take that. But then we also talked about, um, you know, we talked. We looked at getting a grant to put up a fence. People in, t in the East Calist and other areas didn't like the idea of a fence because it would look ugly. Um, and we can't afford to have staff there to make sure people aren't dropping stuff off when they shouldn't. Um, we got done because there was other stuff dumped there that shouldn't be there. There are, you know, rodents, those kinds of issues. So we thought, well, maybe we could talk to the school and see about uh, the possibility of having the, f I guess they call it fast trash? Where yeah, they well, that's what we have right now. It's a fast trash right. place on a different location. A different location? Well, our, our current location is different than the school we're talking right, about. Right, right. So we, we, just, we wanted to talk to the school about possibly having the Saturday pickup, which is like for three hours, at the school, the school already has a dumpster and a composting dumpster. Mm -hmm. So you know, we've, we've talked about you know cooperation and sharing and all those nice things. So we wanted to have that conversation with the school. Well, to be clear, we're not talking about using a school dumpster. The the fast trash. No, no, that and would, be, would bring that their would be truck. for the compost. Uh, no, well, no, they already have a compost. No, but we talked about. Putting the compost in, in the, their compost. In the school, yes. school's compost. <coughs> right. The Perrys who do the fast trash, they take it off site the same day. Right. So That's it would never be left at the school. So yep. they just show up with the truck they just and show people up their bring truck, bags. They bring their bags. Awesome. Just yep. what they do in East Montpelier at the um, WEC parking lot now. Yeah, the former fire station. Right. Yeah. So we just wanted, we wanted to have that conversation because we have to get back to the state with this violation that they noticed the violation that they gave us. And, and the problem with the current site, it's, a, it's historically been, it actually was a landfill at one time, it's where the cattle trash used to go. And then it got closed to municipal trash and it was only a, a stump dump, as they call it, brush and stumps and that kind of stuff, well, which wound up now. being, which wound up being building materials and all this illicit dumping and whether or not someone's there. And we have no way to control that. And even though we, we've ceased that and our highway crew doesn't dump over there any brush or anything any longer, we still have people backing up and dumping stuff and also leaving trash, knowing that they will get picked up on Saturday. So um, we need to end that. Are and we going to run into that issue at the school? I mean, we're going to transfer that well, problem I think to that's the, I think the fact that they come with the truck and they leave. Right now, the that's what happens at your place right now. No, but right now to there's truck and leave. But the, right now there's people, it's an old landfill. It's an old it's landfill. There. There's a sign that says Callis Depot. There's the thing where they pull up so they can, you know, that what is that? That boardwalk looking thing with the steps right. on it. So you can get so you can put the stuff into the truck. That wouldn't be there. So that leaves. I mean, those signs there are like it's like advertising that. You know the trash gets picked up here. Right, so there would be, be no trash would be advertised. I mean, if we did the school, I think you would find people, not many, but I think the opportunity for people to drive by Friday night and go, oh, they'll be here tomorrow, just leave them. Well, they well, could that do that, and then we'll this. We won't do this. We can try it, and if it doesn't work, then we stop. If it's a problem for the school, it stops. You yeah, guys I was going to say, can we do it? An exploratory. We're, we're just trying, our, what's, what's, we, we're proposing at yeah. very least try this as a test run. Yeah. We don't have any permanent infrastructure that we, we get, need to maintain at our current location or we would need to dismantle. There's nothing there and it's just another one going from, from one location to another, from one parking lot to another. Right. And if it doesn't work for the school for whatever set of reasons, reasons we've been thought right. about, then we'll just end it. We'll come um, up another. Right. And we've talked, you guys just we've talked to We've talked yeah. to the Perrys and they don't care where they park their truck. Mm -hmm. 
Really? I was thinking over by the dumpsters in that corner, you know. Well, we could explore. I mean, I would obviously we we don't have a corn mill. We can explore that, but we'd have to right. with that caveat. Well, we do have a corn mill. If, if oh, I would want, I would oh want yeah, to, we do. I would want you to. Yes. to we want you to, we want want to put it on a future can we do school that? board yes. agenda. Yeah, we, don't, we have to, in, to check with our insurance. Right. And how that yeah. would work? Yeah. Well, yeah. the town insurance we could cover it. Right. The town. And what we want to make sure, you know, that we're not. Our insurance would still have to authorize it. Yeah, probably they probably have to have a waiver or something. Yeah, we have to yeah. work that out. Yeah, we just have to make you know the concerns we've got. We got young kids there, so we have to you know that has to be absolutely clean, and you know we can't have people dumping. Like this. So that would be a major issue. Yeah. Well, so, I just wanted to put it out there that you know yeah, we if can. we can work together on this issue because we have to solve it. We have to get back to the state. It's already been since April. And what do we what do we need? We need a certain size parking lot and what? What do you need? To be room enough this? for a truck room to park. Enough, how big is the room truck? enough for people to be able to pull their cars up and unload how big, them. What size truck? I mean, they do it in front of the Woodbury uh, General Store, Fire right? Station. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, every Saturday. So that much room. There. Yeah, that's that what you need. And it's more than enough room in those slots. Yeah. yeah. Scott, what's the name of the guy that gave us demerits? They gave us Bruce the numbers of the lead for the dumpers. Bruce Westcott. Bruce Westcott? No, it wasn't Bruce. Oh, it was from the state. It was. Um, well, my, my question is. Deborah Pierce, I think, is her yeah. name. Our, so we have that sign up that says depot and we're registered and all this sort right. of thing. What if we just say, no, we're not a depot, we're not registered? We'll take the sign down, we'll ask uh, it's a Seamus to drive his truck there forever. Mm -hmm. Just cut them uh, off. I think people are going there because there's a sign. They're going there because they have it. Their grandfather went there, and they remember pitching it over the bank. There's no bank. I mean, they'd be pitching it on the soccer field. The guy was. It is this. It's my different. Question is, you know? My question is, could we could know? I mean, does this guy inspect the Woodbury? Fast trash? Does he inspect? Well, the, I think the problem is, is we, ma we maintain we maintain a, a certification there, even though right. we no longer need one. The other ones don't we need have a, right. yeah, that's And so, right. so the, why did we why do, do that? Do we do well, we, we can we need to just not renew it. Yeah. And um, well, just get out of it. But that's not the issue. That's not why residents right. are dumping there because we have a certification. Right. Residents are always. It's why we're being matter. inspected. Yeah. And the inspection is legitimate. If people are dumping, they, yeah. they don't want to see that. And if we don't want to see that. If so. we just had fast trash like they have in Woodbury and he's not clean or stuff, that doesn't require any kind of certification. Right. Then we wouldn't get inspected. Right. Yeah. What we have now does not require a certification. Okay. So, so one of the things we could check out is getting rid of the certification. Send a letter. But it, it still doesn't matter if, if they happened to buy and they saw illegal dumping. They saw illegal dumping on your property. Right. They write still, the right. same letter. You're right. dumping illegally. Right. Yep. People run burn barrels. They write them notices, same notices. Yeah. Well, on the fast track, I mean, it wasn't so much that you didn't have a place to do it. I think you were offering to do it at the school to help with that community connection. Yeah, also that, right. Because it brings people, well, to, it, it brings people to the nice. school. You know, that normally wouldn't go to the school for any reason, another sense of using the school as part of the community. That's a very good point. It's a trash dump. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not. But, yeah, but you know, you can, have, you can have Girl Scout cookie sales and Boy Scout whatever stuff going on at the same Bottle time. Collections. Bottle collections. Well, truthfully, well, it's, it's a, I mean, it is a social event. I mean, which it is. I mean, you go to the dump, and that's where you meet people, right? Yeah. Sharon? That's Ken Square. He knows that. Sharon? Yeah. No, I just, I think people have a different sense of accountability and responsibility when it comes to the yeah. school grounds. And they yeah. do, do a quiet bend in the road that literally nobody can see. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, so, sorry. Yeah. May I, just yeah. as a, speaking as a resident of East Hallis mm -hmm. Village, uh, Moving <clears throat> the trash pickup to somewhere else doesn't solve the problem of people illegally dumping. So what's the well, what's can, the idea? We could, we could put can. berms up at that yeah, point and just close and the grass whole and area. Just close that and grass it off. That's the other one we discussed. Like guardrail or something. Grass well, that's what I was I was interested. I, I didn't believe that there we wasn't a solution. I was just we curious. Don't, we don't need a parking lot there anymore. Right. The you lovers can, can park somewhere else, <laughs> not at the dump, and we can <laughs> make we can actually make that. We actually talked about that, or we can make that like a picnic area. It's actually not. A terrible place to hang out. Um, so right. you could also make that a nice little picnic area. A little too. Park, park area. Um, 
And then the, another alternative, potential alternative, I'm sure it's probably been considered, but I know that the Callis Rec Association operates the rec field, mm -hmm. which has a big parking lot that is not necessarily mm -hmm. used for anything a lot of time. Well, yeah, I mean, originally <coughs> the thought was That's the, an alternative. the community, mm -hmm. with the school and the town yeah. working together, getting people to the school, like you said, who don't normally go there. There's a lot of opportunities to get people involved, maybe, mm -hmm. in watching, you know, a sports event or something while they're there. There's, and we need there's no sports events at the school. Well, All the sports events happen at the rec field. Yeah. 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 They could right. They could use the library. I, mean, <coughs> I think if we're sure. creative, there's yeah. a lot of ways to get people involved more with the school yeah. if they're taking their trash there. And those Normally, school lots they don't are maintained. Have to go. Year round, those rec lots aren't necessarily. Right. They don't right. not sure. Right. Yeah. So you, that's this, true in the winter. Yeah, yeah. and with so <laughs> I mean, there's all. I mean, I, I can just see it. There being more interaction. Yeah. And Scott. we need the compost bin. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Scott, I go there every Saturday. Eighty percent of the people that come during the summer are from Woodbury, from <laughs> Saban Farm, from. Oh, even though they have their own. They don't. Okay. Yeah, no, they go. They they go to there. Huh. Okay, one more, more, more comment, Gail, and then we're going to wrap things up. It's my understanding that that property belongs to the uh, Dwinell Association. Yeah, the rec field. The rec field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It was so, it's leased to the CRA for a, a dollar a lifetime or something. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> but I think, I think the I think no, know, absolutely. And I wasn't, I wasn't offering it as a as a necessarily right. a place. I thought, I I thought of the rec field, but I think the school possible alternative makes more sense. Well, again, there's no plowing of the rec field. Right. So you can get down. There I mean, the, the town winter. plows out the parking lot at the school already. Hmm. So. You know, you have to put the ramp in at the school. That takes up a lot of room. I don't know why you have to have the ramp. They don't so have you the can other. get to the recycling truck. But they don't have that anywhere else, that ramp, the, at the tra fast trash places. So that's how, well, that's how Brian Perry runs He's it. He's going to have to change his operation if it doesn't work for us. So, all right, I know we were going to talk about community engagement, but I don't think we have time. And that was kind of something Dot was on call for, so. And she is out sick. And she's out sick. So I wanted to thank the school board so much. I know you guys are busting your tails, and we really appreciate it. We've, and all the long hours, and all the meetings, and yet you came tonight, and we really appreciate all your work. And thanks for We appreciate your school. interest and the invitation. We would love to do it again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is important. I mean, we're both doing town business, and we're working in isolation. On this is really great. Well, we ought to do it, you know, at least two or three times a year. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And if there is something you need from us as you're working on whatever, we'll you know, you want to have some kind of joint document signed by the town and the school board, just let us know. As this thing ramps up, if you need more meetings, just more contact We will. Just, we will. just we'll con do. contact Denise yeah. and we'll just have a... Right. You know, or if you want us to attend... Agenda, it's not you want us to attend. attend. We'll attend your meetings. Right. Yeah. So just let us know. So I think the communication lines are pretty good. They're very good. As far as the, the trash is concerned, Right. I think we have a meeting coming up that we can we have a full, we have address full board meeting agenda. that we can talk to them about yeah. yes. to get on the agenda. And yeah. also just because I want to make sure I'm on the record, I was in no way offering or suggesting that the no, rec field was a place to go. I was I was started thinking about it as an alternative. Oh, yes, it's already in the notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all Chris the Kendrick. It's in the Times Argus. <laughs> <laughs> Times Argus. Oh, I was going to sit in my mouth just so I stay on the paper. <laughs> This time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah. Aye. 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 And is Katie's doing these notes? Do you all want to adjourn? Do you want to adjourn? Should I? Sure. Motion to adjourn. So, all in favor? Yeah. All that and then some.